Hello, Claire here, Peace and Love. I am here today to talk about <clears throat> uh, the seventh and eighth cervical nerves and how those nerves give, uh, bring sensation to certain uh, areas of your skin, the surface of your skin. So uh, we have been covering the innervation of the skin or mapping your central nervous system on the surface of your skin. And we've gotten all the way down from the top to these last two nerves of the arms. I'm going to just show you a picture here so that you can see it. It's um, the seventh and the eighth cervical nerves are the browny, orangey ones, right underneath the purple one. So we're going to start with C7. And <clears throat> C7 is responsible for this little strip of skin that goes from the spine all the way to the top two fingers, the peace and love fingers. And here you can see that there's a little part of that innervation that wraps around to your wrist, kind of to the inside of your palm. So let's just trace it on our own bodies, because that's how I learn. I learn by experiencing. <clears throat> so um, I'm just going to show you the skelly so you can see. There we go. Um, if, we, if we go down one, two, three, four, five, sorry. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is seven. And seven usually sticks out quite a bit on most people. So you might be able to find it back there. Um, <clears throat> and you might even be able to take some time for yourself if you like. And, and trace those little processes and find your own there. So it just covers a little strip of skin across the top-ish, middle-ish of the shoulder blade, not terribly precise scientifically. And then it goes across the top of the arm here. And then it covers this muscle and uh, rotating bone here. And then it comes along all the way to the tip of the fingers in between these two fingers. And it comes right in. It kind of ends somewhere in here. And so that motion of folding, it makes sense that that would all be the same nerve and that you would have that sensation there to fold, um, that that would connect. Uh, so let me just bring this down a little bit. The folding, the motion of folding the arm um, seems to me. And of course, if you're reaching, you're grasping something in this part of your hand to bring it towards you. So that makes sense. Um, so you can just trace it on the other side, right from the inside of the palm the skin of those two fingers, down the back of your hand that makes a kind of a duck bill shape, these bones of the hand crossing the wrist and the skin of this rotating bone here, and then across the top-ish of the arm and right back to the spine. So that whole motion of folding. Good. And then C8 is the one that comes out from between 7 and 8. And those can get pretty squished next to each other. Um, C8, actually, I'm sorry, there is no 8th cervical vertebra. The, this vertebra here that sticks out, it starts to reflect the backwards curve. You can see that, the backwards curve of your spine. Um, this is a thoracic, it's called a thoracic vertebra because it's part of that backwards curve. 
and the cervical vertebra are called cervical because they're part of a forwards curve. So there's kind of a nice S shape to your spine there. And so <clears throat> the nerve that comes out right at the juncture where the forward curve of your neck flows into the backwards curve of your spine, that's eight. And it's a very powerful place, kind of hard, hard to touch on yourself. Um, and it goes a little bit more over the middle and body of the shoulder blade. And then it actually covers the skin underneath your arm, underneath this um, very powerful bone, this long bone, you can feel it. And then it enervates the skin of these little, the other two fingers, the Spock fingers. And this one goes right, it actually enervates these two fingers and this skin right here. So it's a little bit more about this powerful reaching that your arm can do. So just tracing on the other arm too from the little fingers, the inside of the wrist here. You can feel this little bone in the wrist that's really important. Uh, to have sensation there. We use that contact a lot to push also, to push. So covering that, and then this whole kind of karate chop bone and the back of the arm all the way back to the spine. So that's really a, a reaching, supports reach, you know. Um, and it's, it's one that martial artists use a lot, this nerve pathway, to roll on the floor. So I don't know if I can show that, you know? But um, if, we're, if we're using a long, um, energized pathway there, you know, you can really support a lot of a lot of movement and you can support reach and it really brings you out of your back a little bit. So that's the eighth nerve. And um, just to give you an image of it, you can see all the nerves of the arms. This is of some medical students that have tried to figure this stuff out. You can see the thoracic nerves are this here on her are these blue ones and all the nerves of the arms that emerge from your forward curve of your neck, the whole arm girdle, the whole shoulder girdle and arm girdle is enervated by this forward curve of your neck. So that's pretty amazing to know. Um, I think a lot of us maybe have an idea that the arms kind of come out of the back or we've been taught that they come out of this part of your back but actually the nerve supply for them comes out of your neck. And that's why it's so important that this be easy and free. All right, peace and love.